Okay, so this, uh, this talk is about um, what I call um, IPv4 heat maps. This talk has a lot of pictures, and some of you have seen these pictures already, either um, online or, or maybe around here. Um, and this is, this is the source of a, a lot of the, uh, this is the inspiration for the, the work that I did and, and the work that a number of other people have done, which I'll, I'll get to at the end. Um, if you haven't seen this picture, this is a, a comic called uh, XKCD, and uh, this came out, I think, uh, earlier this year or, or maybe at the end of last year. And it was a really clever way of organizing the IPv4 address space, and it's labeled and, and everything. <clears throat> um, so th the, his map uses a Hilbert curve, and if you've never seen a Hilbert curve, this is an example of one. This is a fourth order Hilbert curve, and the idea is that you sort of start here and work your way around, and, and eventually you fill up the whole space, and if you need uh, sort of more points, you can, for example, go to a fifth order Hilbert curve and, and you get, you get, it gets denser, but it, it preserves properties of grouping and, and fractal uh, nature and everything. So uh, I've got sort of a pseudo animation here that shows you uh, the layout of a Hilbert curve and I'll sort of step through these one at a time. The, the numbers um, represent uh, the first octet of, of an IP4 address in the map, so this is uh, zero slash eight. There's one slash eight and so on. And so it goes like this. Um, here's, I'm not gonna go through all of them one by one. <laughs> here's um, the next chunk and so on. So that's um, all uh, 256 slash eights in the IPv4 address space. Uh, and, and the color represents, uh, the, the color is uh, rel related to the number, obviously. Um, I'm gonna back up a little bit and make one more point clear. Um, so here's, here's, a, here's a slash eight sized chunk. Here's a uh, slash seven sized chunk. Here's a slash six. Um, here's a slash five. So what's, what's nice about this map is that cider prefixes are always squares or rectangles. There's a slash four, slash three, slash two, slash one, and so on. Um, this little picture shows the address space um, in the map colored by the old pre cider uh, nomenclatures. So class A, B, C, D, and E. This picture is uh, the first data set that I actually um, visualized using, using the software. This is, um, represents the locations of open DNS resolvers in a survey done by John Christoph. And um, so he made his data set available to me and some others and I was really curious to see, you know, how it, how it looked. So I uh, whipped up the software and, and this is what I came up with. I realized that at this level it's really hard to see. Um, so I have a sort of a, here's a, a zoom in section on some, some ripe address space. And you can see different patterns and, you know, different blocks have different characteristics like uh, you know, for the most part, uh, the dark blue represents about one address open in that slash 24. Um, the lighter blue, I have to go back to the scale here, but, you know, when we get into these lighter blues, we're talking 30, 40%, and so on. <clears throat> and here's a, another map. Um, this is from RouteView's data. This is uh, a BGP snapshot. Uh, taken about a month or so ago. And here the color represents the size of an announcement in the routing table. And so one thing that sort of stands out is, is you can see, you know, up, up in this corner is the really early class A holders. Um, here's a lot of uh, RIR, RIR allocations, um, Aaron, APNIC, and so on. Here's a lot of the early class B, and it, and it just looks a lot different. Uh, here's, here's the old class C space. And I'm gonna zoom in on one section to, to highlight some of this. This is um, obviously uh, 15, 16, 12, and 17. <laughs> but you can see, um, for example, that there, in, in this visualiz visualization shows that different uh, prefixes in the routing table overlap. So for example, the purple represents something like a slash eight announcement, and then the blues and the greens are more specific routes. And, um, 
obviously AT&T has a lot of very specific routes in the table. Here's a, a, a yet another map that uses who is data to generate the colors. <clears throat> and um, another thing that's sort of interesting about this is, like, I don't know if it shows up on that screen, whoops. Um, but this is uh, kind of a brown area that uh, comes about from the combination of this space being listed in multiple uh, RIR who is databases. I think in this case it's Aaron and Ripe. This picture is from, uh, from the census that ISI uh, recently published and has been doing for a few years. The colors here represent round trip time in milliseconds from ISI to their targets. Um, just yet another way of, of looking at these types of data sets. So as I said, um, in doing this work, I, you know, at first I thought I was being really clever and unique and I would be the first one to do this, but of course that's never the case. And uh, these URLs point to people that are, are currently doing the same thing or have already done the same thing. The, the first one is a tech report from um, Pennsylvania that came out in 2005 and they have some visualizations using this technique, uh, visual, visualizations of BGP data using that technique. And um, the monkey.org URL is interesting because they've uh, put the data into the Google Maps interface so you can zoom in and uh, you can type in your IP address and it'll, it'll put up a little flag where your IP address is. <coughs> Uh, ISI, I mentioned, they've um, used the same technique and re recently published their data. Um, and there's a couple others there. There's a, a URL where you can, you can uh, download the source code for this. You can uh, browse some full-size images, uh, which I highly recommend because they don't come out very well on the screen here. And there's also some animations. And uh, if I have time and there's no questions, I have an animation that I can maybe show on the screen. How much time do we have? Are there any questions, or should I try the? Let's see if I can find the USB. I didn't test this beforehand, so I have no idea if it's going to play. Oh, Did I lose it? Kind of a big file, but yeah. Well, if it works, it works. <laughs> and if not, I think what what I think we do need to do is try and get the meeting back on time. So, okay. Um, if is this is this online somewhere. It is online, yeah. It's it's like a you know 36 megabyte file, so it's a little bit big, but it's it is online. Yeah. Okay, right. Well, and the URLs there in the slides, so that's yeah. easy to get. So if there's no uh, questions, I think what we'll do is we'll go into the coffee.